you know, if I were to go into an eatery and eat only this Anna Saru, I would still be happy. Because it's as flavorful as that. Mm. Mm. This would also be perfect with some tea. This Sapsige Sopu Bonda. I think all Gavra curries are mostly greenish yellow. Yes. Okay. Lot of mint and coriander. Lot of mint, mint and, and coriander. coriander. The meat in the pulao is soft. Mm. And that's a sort of meat that quite literally melts in the mouth. Hi folks, this is Kripalamana Gourmet on the Road and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well. The current situation has been difficult for most eateries, especially those that are small in size. It's been an uphill struggle for many of them to even sustain themselves. And in this scenario, it becomes near impossible to think of doing something new. But then there are those who are forced to do something new because of the circumstances that they find themselves in. And the eatery that I'm about to visit today is one such example. This eatery opened only a few months ago and they were forced to open because they had no other go. It's run by a couple and they serve local Nati style uta, more specifically Gouda cuisine. So they reached out to us asking us to come and take a look at what they were doing and help spread the word. Meanwhile, we also had some of our viewers who had visited this place and also wrote back to us. So this afternoon, we've stepped out to Ganga's Mudde Mane to try and see if we can help this couple and showcase the work that they're doing. And of course, more importantly, most importantly, taste some great Nati style Uta. Namaskara. Namaskara, sir. Namaskara. Yeah, welcome, welcome. So I'm with Mrs. Nalini and Mr. Hemant Kumar, the couple behind Ganga Mudde Mane. Ganga is Mudde Mane. Yeah. Name? Yeah, ke Ganga is Mudde Mane. Ganga is my in-laws' name. His ah. mother. Or it is like Gangat Kars also. It so, is under Gouda, the ah, yeah, community. So the food that you do is Gouda food. Yes, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. Gouda food. And I suspect that what you have here is the yes. list of dishes. Yes. For breakfast, we have idli, okay. biryani, chapati, parota, dosa, and like soup. And you open at what time? Uh, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, these things are ready. Okay. And some of the mutton dishes are ready. Alright. Yeah. Idu? This is mutton. Mutton. Special, yeah. Mutton chops, uh, liver dry. Liver dry. Boti kalu gujju. Uh. Mutton fry. Uh. This is keema gujju. Uh. This is mutton sukha is completely dry. Uh. This is kaima unde, that is keema okay. ball. Kaima unde. Uh. Yeah, these are chicken specials. Huh. Chicken fry, chicken leg. Chicken leg. And huh. this is tatti, sir. That is tatti is in naughty. Correct, the egg sack. Egg, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Ah. Yeah. This is tawa roast. It is boneless. Huh. This is kebab and lollipop. Yeah. Our special is this chicken and lollipop, kebab and lollipop where we don't put any color, hmm. no tasting powder, nothing. Everything is natural. Even for idli, we don't add soda. teacher actually you were a teacher yeah even now i take tuitions only tuitions okay i skipped my job only because to join hands and giving a support for him this is entirely a new field for me sir how long have you started three months sir. Exactly. so you have a background in this space yes. exactly. how many years have you been so, yeah, 15 years sir. 15 years yeah so mr heman kumar and Mrs. Nalini, so they've ventured into this space because of circumstances yes, sir. circumstances exactly. that compelled him to do something yes. new yes. in a space that he's already been for the last 15 years 15 or so. Years. Yeah. Uh, so, and you decided to join, join him hands. to support yeah, him. Definitely. So, you were otherwise a full time teacher? Yeah, full time teacher. So, Adu Bitti Dhiri. Yeah, yeah. Bitti Dhiri. To help him? Yeah, definitely. Full time, I'm here only with him. Uh, now. <laughs> In the current situation, it's difficult. Andre, existing businesses are difficult, yeah, correct? Yeah, I know. Correct? I know. Andrali, to do something new yeah. really requires a lot of courage. So Maybe the courage only pushed us to open this. Confident about we it. We will give very good food, healthy food, and no confidence. It though. Uh, but as you said, definitely initially it was a you know, tough period only for us. You know, to get customers is not that easy, you know. Uh, yeah. Initially it was very tough. 
but now it's going on so now are you where you want to be in terms of customers or you want you need more customers definitely we need we are not into that stage yes, sir. really yeah. mm. so i think that takes lot of time mm. yeah idhen no family section ah huh? ah sir completely whatever we cook at home the same thing we are doing it here with the same process with the same process so, with uh, more quantity with more quantity yeah. so not bother all definitely definitely please This is the kitchen for non-veg. We have ah. two separate kitchens. Namaskara. So you have two kitchens. This is yeah, your non-veg. Yeah, this is for non-veg. That is vegetarian. We have separate. This is non-veg. So here, what are you doing? Really? Mutton piece pulao. Mutton piece pulao. Yeah. Dumb me ke weight kiti dena. Yeah, dumb kiti dewi. So this water bottle is basically <laughs> just acting as a weight. Weight. So there's a mutton piece pulao happening here. It's finished cooking and yeah. now it is resting on dumb. So therefore, there is a very low flame at the bottom. You have a tawa to prevent most of the heat going up into the pulao and overcooking it at the bottom, and then you have this water canister that's acting as a weight, making sure that the steam doesn't yeah. get anywhere. And that is the mutton korma or uh, chicken biryani special. Chicken biryani. Yeah. Your chicken biryani, the rice is all come together. Yes. Is yes. that your style? Yes, exactly. And we marinate the chicken before adding it to the rice. The cloves, chakke, lavanga, dalchini, uh, garam masala. Dhania powder and chili. What does it get? With that natural color. color. What is turmeric. the color? Turmeric. From turmeric. Turmeric and mint. That's a special chicken leg biryani. Yes. Any there? Spare parts, sir. Spare parts. Yeah. Body is there. Body. Body is separate. Body is separate. And that is also our special, sir. We add green gram. Hesro kalu. Hesro kalu. At kya do? Parimala hesro kalu do. Yes. Ah, mutton chops. Chops. This is also complete Gouda style. All sheep. Yeah, yeah, all sheep. And all masalas are, are done by us only. Kima goju yeah. with the pieces, so fresh pieces or dried pieces? This is fresh piece. We fresh don't piece. use dried piece. Yeah. Little masala. Le. What is more ingredient? Just see an agate. Coriander with little garam masala, which is homemade. I love that greenish yellow yeah. color of that. Little of turmeric. Chili powder. This is also three types of chilies are added for this. One is for color, one is for taste, one is for that hotness. What chilies do you put in this? Guntur. Guntur for heat. Yeah. Bhargi for color. Bhargi for color. Yeah. And that uh, man cutti do that small is for completely khara. Amal hurdu bislag ha ki amal mission hats kon baro. Sir, this is really a very big process for the sambar powder. What we mm. do at home? Mm. Around the thirty ingredients are there in this. This is sambar powder. So these are the spices. How do you do? Biryani ke. Ah, uh, so you have some mace, cloves. Yeah. Some cassia, cinnamon, cinnamon yeah. black elaichi, yeah, exactly. pepper, yeah. marath mogu, yeah. kalua. Yeah, that is nutmeg. Nutmeg, ah, yeah. these are very small though. Yeah, I have not seen nutmeg this small. Dried fenugreek. Yeah, this is that um, kasuri methi powder. Kasuri Even methi this, powder. Yeah, so yeah. basically, this is powdered yeah, into. Yeah, this is powder. We just roast it in low flame and then powder it. So this goes at the end. Yes, end. This is ah. our yeah. Peas, mutton, pulao. Peas, mutton, pulao. Pulao, yeah. Only Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So I think we've come on the right day. Yeah. Certainly yeah, looks exactly. very good. The other rice you use, Martha, is there? Ali. Jira rice, basmati. Basmati. Ah, so this is a combination. And in this, you have some coconut milk that yes, goes exactly. in. So that's the difference yeah. between the chicken biryani and the mutton. Also, the colors here are a lot muted. I think this is also more gentler in the flavor. Yes. Yes. That's certainly something that I'm looking forward yes. to tasting here. Yeah. There's some ragi mudde happening there. I think our gouda meal is incomplete without yeah. ragi mudde. Yeah, so this is the completely kitchen for vegetarian. All so, veggies cooked here only. So this is like a manedu kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Uh? Food is also manedu. Tomato rasam. Tomato rasam. Yeah, for uh. veg meals. So who makes it? I. You make it. Yeah, I'm veg chef here. <laughs> you're the veg chef. <laughs> yeah. So looks like you're done with your cooking for the I day. I am done. Uh, that's why yeah, you're. Yeah, by twelve o'clock it's ready. By twelve o'clock. By twelve. So yeah. what time do you start? Uh, morning breakfast eight. It's ready. So okay. after that, I start around ten thirty eleven. Depends. So you do the vegetarian, vegetarian items. Vegetarian. Yeah. But at home you also cook non-veg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cook non-veg. I don't taste it. You don't taste no, it. No, no, no. I'm. You're a vegetarian. Vegetarian. Married to a gouda. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. And what is this here? Ah, uh, this is uh, sprouted seeds. Today's special, sir. Sprouted seeds. Yeah. Bengal gram, was gram. With what is aloo. It? With aloo. With yeah, potato. Yeah, with aloo. Yeah. And usually we give one side dish. Today's for with sprouted seeds always we give this only. That is the sabaki sopina bonda. Ah, sabse ge sopina bonda. Bonda. Yeah. Finely chopped onions. Mention kya idhar? Yeah, yeah idhar. Shunti idhar. Ah. Kothmiri idhar. Curry leaves idhar. Sir, this is bonda. Bonda. 
So you come in the morning yeah. and you cook the vegetarian yes. dishes. Yeah, and of course Yogesh is the main yes. chef here. Yeah. Fantastic. Nali fry. Nali fry. Nali fry. Ah, curry leaves. Yeah. Chopped onions. Yeah. Of course, then, nalli. then the nalli, the mutton shank. This is all curry mutton. Sir. All yeah, curry yeah, mutton. So, so, so Gaudas like curry. Yeah. Nalli, the mutton shanks have gone into that mix with the curry leaf and the onions. Onions. Now, little of gravy, chopped gravy. Chopped gravy. Chops gravy. Yeah. I think all Gauda curries are mostly greenish yellow. Yeah. So, I think a lot, lot of... A lot of mint and coriander. A lot of mint, mint and, and coriander. coriander. Salt, pa salt. Some salt. Garam masala. Garam masala. Chilli. Chilli powder. Little pepper. pepper. So that gives you spicy. So this is a spicy mutton fry. Yes. So is that a very popular dish? Yes, sir. Of course. Uh, People like this because both no nalli mule. Uh, they suck that whatever uh, is inside. I think meat on the bone yeah. is always yes. is always special. <laughs> and if you love your meat, you love your nalli. That nalli fry. You guys next in Marte Dara? Chicken nalli pop. Chicken lollipop. Is there egg yeah, in this? Yeah, yeah, egg is there. Egg is there, along with some spices, yes. I'm sure. Along with that chili paste. So, what yeah. chili is that? Bargi. Yes. Bargi means. Soak it in Very hot water huh. for 15 to 20 minutes. Then make a paste of it and then add. You know, looking at the chili paste, and you know me, I'm in a kitchen. I need to taste something. So, I think this chili paste, this bargi mentioned, guy, which has been soaked in hot water ah, yes. and then crushed to a paste, paste, is what I'm going to taste. It has, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I can feel, I think chili seeds are all chili seeds are there. How do? So, the tip of my tongue, I can feel that kara. Yes. Uh, so, the spicy is Yeah. Very bad. Ki. Only bad. Ki. Man katti ha kala, guntu ra kala. It's too spicy. Yeah. I think what happens is that because it's in that hot water, yes. the chili releases that. The chili oils. Yes. The seed, all of that in that hot water, I think the heat content. Yes concentrates and that's what I'm tasting. The moment I place this at the tip of my tongue, I could fear that searing, pink pricking heat of that Biyadgi mention curry. Fantastic. Ah. In winter season, we were adding the same seeds actually. So basically, chicken is heat inducing. Yes. Therefore, they add some gas gas, some yes. poppy seeds yes. to cool it down. And in winter, you add some sesame yes. seeds. Yes, white, white. Yellow, yes. the white yellow. Because that warms the body yes, up. Yes, exactly. So the place is quite modest and if you happen to be here on a slightly busy day, I don't think it takes much to get this place busy because I think there are about 4 or 5 tables outside. There's a family section of sorts on the inside. So when you come here and perhaps after this video be prepared for a bit of a bustle. It isn't about the ambience, it isn't about the decor here, more specifically about the food. The food that comes from Hemant and Nalini's kitchen here at Ganga Mudyamane. Time to make a beginning with that leg soup, the kal soup. I think when it comes to these sort of establishments, eateries, there's always that kal soup is standard. Typically, this is a breakfast dish. So when you have the kal soup in the morning, that's all the nourishment that you need to kickstart your day. But out here, I'm kickstarting my lunch with that kal soup. That's an aromatic kal soup. I can taste some of the flavors of that gelatin in this soup. There's also some coriander, some tomatoes in this. There is pepper but barely enough just to warm your throat. And as you spoon the soup into your mouth, you quite begin to warm up to it with every spoon. Mm. What I like here is that you can feel some of the tomato on your palate. The pulpiness of the tomato holds the warming flavors of the broth. And as you place it in your mouth, quite quickly releases its punchy flavors. You know, this kal soup, when I tasted it at first, I thought it was quite mellow. But as you taste spoon after spoon, the warmth of this leg soup makes a cumulative spicy impact on your throat. And now I can certainly feel the warmth of the pepper. Ah. So brain pepper dry. Brain pepper dry. Chapati, ah, nice. And that is served to you with some saru. I think this is the mutton saru. Mm. 
There's a flavor of the curry leaf, a bit of the masala. I think there's some coriander that goes into that masala. I can taste some green chili heat, I think, in that. But it's that flavor of the curry leaf. Mm. And then the buttery lushness of that beja as it quite literally dissolves on your tongue. Kima ball curry? Kima unde curry. Ah, the kima ball curry is also here. I've spooned some of that beja fry in that chapati, in the folds of this chapati along with some curry leaf. Mm. That beja is lush. It dissolves away the moment you place this in your mouth. Mm. I can taste the flavor of the curry leaf. I think there's some green chili in there somewhere. And once you get past that, perhaps even some pepper, all that you're tasting is a lush, unctuous, butteriness of that beja as it quite simply dissolves on your tongue and slithers down your throat. And if the creaminess of the beja gets to you, if there is such a thing, cocoon it delicately in the folds of that soft home style chapati. Mm, that's delicious. Some curry here. Mm. It is the flavors of the coriander. I think there's also some fenugreek that goes into that. I'm going to go back to some more of that brain fry with some curry leaf this time. Mm. That's delicious. So chicken tawa roast. Chicken tawa roast. Boti kalu. Boti kalu goju. We got some of the signature dish. This is a chicken tawa roast. So this they make with the chicken breast. We saw it marinated, marinated with mostly the green chilli. So I expect that to be spicy with some ginger garlic and then tawa roasted. And once it's roasted, I think they apply some of that green chutney on top. And then of course, you have that boti goju, which is the intestine. I've tasted a fair bit of goju in recent times. So I wasn't really keen on tasting this, but they've decided to serve me nonetheless. So we have the boti goju too. I think let's taste that chicken tawa roast next. So that tawa roast is busy. You can taste the spicing of the green chilli, but before that you taste the aroma of the mint. There's plenty of pudina that's gone into that. The chicken breast is not my most favoured piece of meat, especially if you're doing a tawa roast, because it tends to be a tad fibrous, and if you're roasting it in a tawa, it tends to get a bit chewy. And that's what I'm tasting in this chicken tawa roast. But the flavours are quite interesting. You're tasting the freshness of the mint. There's a bit of lime too that you taste in the tartness of the chutney. And then you have the warmth, the warmth of the green chilli. Mm. Mm. Plenty of mint in that chutney. I think what they also do is once the chicken is tawa roasted, they also smear some of the chutney on that chicken. So you're tasting the minty freshness of that pudina chutney on this chicken tawa roast. Mm. My number one pick though from the three dishes that I've tasted thus far definitely has to be that beja fry. If you love your brain or actually not your brain but the sheep's brain definitely try this dish out. I think let's go next for that boti goju. So this is basically intestine and they cook it here with some green gram and I'm told they also add some raw banana into it just to give it that thickness, that thickness that you expect from a goju. So goju typically isn't like a saru which is flowy, a goju is thick, almost holds itself together. So typically when you're tasting boti, it can at times smell a bit gamey, a bit animal-like. So what's important is for that boti to be cleaned. And then what also helps is the addition of things like that hesru kalu because that has its own earthy flavors and that can mask the slightly raw animal flavor that you will taste sometime in spare parts. Let's taste that boti. Mm. That boti is cooked through quite well. And I think because of the fact that they add some raw banana into it, tiny cubes of raw banana that go into it. So because of which you're also tasting some starchiness of the raw banana in that goju. And then the earthy, comforting flavors of the hesru kalu or the green gram. What I also like is that the boti is cooked just right. If boti is undercooked, it can tend to be a bit chewy and you can keep chewing on it forever. 
I think let's go next for that khima unde, the khima unde. So this is basically mutton mince that's formed into dumplings. Some use eggs, some use gran flour. Let's see what is there in this mutton mince ball. Mm. What I'm tasting in this is mostly the meat. There's a bit of the green chilli that you taste, the freshness of the coriander. So coriander is a given in most of the gouda style curries. There's a fair bit of coriander, some mint that goes in along with green chillies. There's also some warmth of some ginger that I'm tasting in that mutton mince ball. So I'm sure there's a bit of gram flour that goes into it, but it's more of the meat that you're tasting. The gram flour is visible a tad in its powdery texture that clings to the meat. But you're tasting mostly the meat in that meat mince ball. I think you also need to soak that mince ball in plenty of curry to make for a nice moist bite. So this is that nalli fry, the dish that we saw being made in the kitchen here and I'm told this is one of their signature specialties. Ah, that's a weighty lamb shank. And we also have some chicken keema goju. So most people make the mutton keema goju, but they also make a chicken keema goju here. I think I'm going to taste the chicken keema before I taste that mutton nalli fry because once I taste this, I don't think that chicken goju will be able to register on the palate. Mm. So it's more like tiny cubes of chicken that's tossed in a masala and that's what they call the keema goju and there's also some pulses in there somewhere. This is elephant's food. This is yam. Which you are asking this ah, one. Yam yeah. after that. Suvarna gadde. Suvarna yeah. ah. So I think that's interesting. With every dish that you taste here, you're tasting something in addition to the main ingredient. So for instance, in this chicken keema goju, there is also some suvarna gadde or some yam that's gone in. So you're tasting the chicken, you're biting into the chicken and then you have a bit of the crunch of that yam, of the suvarna gadde. So I think it makes for an interesting texture when you're tasting it and also provides that dish a touch of nutrition. And I think these are dishes that have been made at home, that have been made in the home of Nalini and Hemant Kumar. And I think that's really what they're trying to showcase even in their eatery. More than the chicken, I'm appreciating the earthy flavors of the yam, of the Suvarna Gadde in this chicken keema goju. So when you come here, you can order for these dishes as sides, but also order for them as a meal. So if you were to, let's say, order the mutton keema ball as a meal, you would get this dish. You would get some rice or bodde or chapati on the side, along with a bit of rasam and also some buttermilk. So that's typically how people order their food here. They order for the dishes as meals. So you choose one as your meal and then the rest can come in as sides. That crunch of that yam, the suvarna gadde is quite enduring. Time to get to that mutton nalli fry. Mm. That meat has a bit of a bite. So I think when it comes to gouda style food, you typically want to chew on your meat. You don't want your meat to be of the consistency of the texture that it dissolves the moment you place it in your mouth with very little effort. On the other hand, you want to bite into your meat and that's a kind of nully fry that this is. Mm. There's plenty of meat there. And as you work your way towards the inside, of that nali, then you come across meat that yields with the slightest of bite. You're tasting the flavor of that garam masala. The garam masala that's gone into this mutton nali fry. The certain bits of the meat that yield with the least resistance and certain others that warrant a bit of a chew. Ooh. There's some of that marrow that's oozing out. Which? So Nalini here is making sure that I also taste what yeah. comes out of her kitchen. Well, time to take a bit of a break from all that meatiness here and go for that veg meals. You know, I've eaten all these meaty dishes, but there's something about plain old Anna Saru. So this is a sprouted gram curry. There's some Bengal gram, some horse gram and potatoes. I also have a rasam. This is a tomato rasam. I think I want to make a beginning with that sapsige. Bonda. Mm. 
the slightest of crunch as you bite in that bonda that is quite fluffy on the inside with the aromatic flavors of the dill or the sapsige and then you also tasting a bit of the sweetness that comes from the onions mm this would also be perfect with some tea this sapsige soppu bonda you know this is a sort of bonda that you will go to someone's house and enjoy i guess if you were to land at nalini's house during tea time she would probably offer you some of the sapsige soppu bonda with some tea that's exactly the sort of homely flavors that i'm tasting in this bonda mm Let's go over some of that anna saru, the saru of of sprouted lentils, some horse gram and Bengal gram with some potato. That saru is hot to the touch. Hmm, it's quite flavorful. Solba kara gude hai there, so I think there's some kara puri also that goes into that. Hmm, the lentils have been cooked just right. It has a bit of a bite. as opposed to being cooked to a complete mush you know i've tasted all these meaty dishes right from the paya soup to the brain fry to the chicken tawa roast to the mutton nalli fry to the keema ball to the boti goju to that chicken keema after tasting all those flavors i'm quite astonished that this humble saru of some sprouted gram the bengal gram and the horse gram still manages to register on my palate And the red chili spice certainly packs a bit of a punch. I'm quite enjoying that white rice. I'm going to taste some with the saru. You know, if I were to go into a eatery and eat only this anna saru, I would still be happy. Because it's as flavorful as that. The saru doesn't feel like it's a side act for someone who's a vegetarian and wants a simple meal. You'll be quite happy with the anna and that saru, of course, along with some rasam as well, and bisi bisi sabse ke sopu bonda. Since I have some more of that keema unde, I think I'm going to go for that with the white rice. So what turn again again there? It has been sitting here for a while, but I'm sure that won't take away from the flavors. You can taste the flavor of the coriander in that curry, and as that keema ball has cooled down. You're now tasting a little more of the powderiness of the gram flour that is clinging on to the mutton mince. Hmm, that's a hot and sour mango pickle. I'll taste some of that rasam before our last dish here at Ganga Mudde Mane. That is hot. Hot temperature wise and also spice wise. Mutton piece pulao, and this is made only on certain days of the week. They make it on a Wednesday, which is today when we've landed here, and they also make it on a Sunday and a Friday, if I'm not mistaken. And that pulao is hot. There's plenty of green chilies. Let's go for some of the meat as well. So there's about three or four pieces of meat that you find in each pulao, and the pulao is served to you with some. Mosur bhaji or the raita, and there's a buttermilk also that comes along with every meal. I can see plenty of green chilies in this pulao, and also the peas, some of the spices. I think some cinnamon. There's some marat mogu somewhere as well. That's the mace. So this is a pulao that gives you a hint of what to taste even before you place it in your mouth. That's a pulao that feels moist to the touch. Hmm. And that's a pulao that's quite gentle in the manner in which it greets your palate. So I saw all this green chili here, so I was expecting a bit of the pointy heat from the green chilies, but there's none of that that you taste. What you're tasting is the gentle lilt of the spices, the hard spices that have gone into it. The slight wail of chili heat that you taste somewhere in there, but what you're tasting mostly is the subtle flavors. of the spices of the hard spices the sweetness of the oils the essential oils of the spices perhaps the star anise the cloves there's a bit of astringent sweetness also that you taste on the palate this is a pulao that clumps together this is not a pulao where every grain of rice is separate this is a pulao that's moist and also the sort that clumps together it's slightly unto as well and i'm told the reason for that is there's some coconut milk 
that goes into the making of that pulao. So that's what gives it that moist, slight stickiness. Mm. Let's taste that meat. The meat in the pulao is soft. Mm. Well, it also has a fair bit of fat that's ribboned through the meat. So that meat is of the texture that quite simply almost melts away in the mouth. What's interesting about this pulao is its mellow flavors. So if you like your pulao with mellow flavors, this is certainly a pulao to try. And what I find quite enduring is a gentle warmth. And that warmth laced with that slightly astringent sweetness of the hard spices. And of course, every once in a while, you'll be rewarded with a creamy pop of the peas. Because after all, this is a mutton peas pulao. Let's taste some of the rice and the meat. Mm. This is a sort of pulao where you need to taste a bit of the meat with the rice. Because when you taste them individually, they're quite disparate. The rice is moist, slightly clumpy, has that sweet lilt of some of the hard spices that go into it. The meat on the other hand, because it's got a fair bit of the fat that's ribboned through it, and because it's cooked to a texture where it almost dissolves in your mouth, has that fatty, unctuous flavor. And that's the sort of flavor that you want to taste with every morsel of the rice. Well, I've enjoyed my meal here. Some dishes more than the others. For instance, that brain dry. Certainly a dish that you should order if you love your beja. Mutton nalli fry. Also that very interesting boti goju with the raw banana. I also found the vegetarian meal quite endearing. Especially that gram saru with the potatoes. And also that sapsige soppu gonda. And that mutton piece pulao too is quite special. In the current difficult times that we live in, where existing eateries are finding it difficult to keep the show going, I must commend the courage of Hemant, his wife Nalini and the team here for making a beginning in these very trying circumstances. I hope that the food that they do here, many of the recipes which go back to their homes, will find enough customers and also many amongst you who will return here to make Ganga Mudde Mane a successful venture. Fledgling eateries like these need all the support that they can get. I hope you found this episode interesting. Until the next time, take care, stay safe and happy eating. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!